My watch tells me to stand up every every 50 minutes. So that was perfect timing. You just said stand a very up. bossy watch. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> Uh, good morning. Is, 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 so yes, good morning for those of you in this time zone at least, and for those of you on the Zoom, uh, good afternoon. It's so good to, to be with you in person. This is the first time we've had a meeting where we can actually see you like this. It's great. I want to say it's remarkable how much can be done during a lockdown. And I look back over what's happened over this uh, few months and then year. And it's been great. The team have worked immensely well, been, been adaptable, and have found ways to get stuff done, which is just great. I'm not going to repeat what's in my report because you can read it at your leisure. And I publish my phone number and email almost everywhere. So if you've got any questions, just Google Richard Romney. I'll probably come up with my phone number or something. Um, but if you've got questions, talk to me. I'm very happy to chat about it. But what I do want to highlight are three areas. Firstly, recruitment. You'll see from the report what's going on. And it's been amazing what happened, what's happened. I cannot under, understate the impact of taking a new job in the midst of a pandemic. Actually, that happened to you, didn't it? Uh, yes. Yes. Let's yeah, move on. <laughs> it's just crazy that you start and the first thing you do is not be able to see the people you're serving. And so a number of our chaplains took on these new roles. And so we spent a lot of time coaching people. They had to deal with conflict in the early days. They've done great. There's been some, some real achievements in what can be done over recruitment. In some places, we had to pause recruitment. In Vina del Mar and in Rio de Janeiro, it's just not safe to do it at the moment. And that's been very, very difficult for the chaplaincies. And for us, it's great to have Alice here. Alice has been working for ICS for a year, and yesterday was the first time I met her. <laughs> she, she could have been an avatar, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and here she is. So it is possible <coughs> to work in different ways. And it, it feels like, I know, I know Alice, having uh, had breakfast with her this morning, it doesn't feel much different, does it? Just chatting. You know, so it's been a great success. So recruitment. New work. Izmir continues to impress us. I want to tell you some stories because you'll read the, the sterile um, explanations, but I want to tell you stories. What that James has done recently is he's been tidying up a church in uh, Bornevo, an area of, of Izmir. And this church, St Mary's, was uh, quite tatty and students used to hang around there. So now they've cleaned it up and it's starting to become beautiful. And people walk in and go, can you tell me what that stained glass means? Or can we just talk about stuff? And when, when they say stuff, they mean faith. So the very act of tidying up the property is becoming an evangelistic opportunity in that context. It's really interesting to watch. They also did um, a, a big stained glass of Ignatius. Uh, uh, was it? Polycarp, Polycarp. Mm -hmm. Um, of Polycarp, and uh, they, they tied it up and spent a lot of money making it beautiful. And just as they were lifting it in, it fell. Unfortunately, the, the guy that had done all the work just went, got it, no problem here, no, nothing to see here. But again, it's a great opportunity to talk about faith and the history of faith in, in Izmir, Smyrna. Blair in Tunis, we helped a guy called Blair get out there and work during the lockdown. What he did, is he started, you can't use pictures of people in the, in the Arab world. So he started getting local artists to write out Bible verses in Arabic and put them around the church. Fantastic conversation started and started talking about faith. And so is not always to be the optimist. Um, we, had, we tried some work in Rotterdam with Pakistani people and it didn't complete the way we hoped. And so an area of new work that didn't work out. But if you don't fail, you're not trying hard enough, are you? It's as simple as that. If you're learning to ride a bike and you don't fall off, you're not trying. Jim, would you like to say something about resort mission? Absolutely. <clears throat> right, we've already heard a little bit about some of the issues of resort mission over the pandemic times. Basically, there's two words that uh, sum up the problems for resort mission. 
they are COVID and Brexit. Um, we didn't realise the problems about Brexit until the problems about COVID were beginning to ease off, but those are big. However, those seemingly insurmountable problems have been overcome by three words, dedication, partnership, and hope. And the first thing I want to say is the dedication of the team of chaplains that I have. They have been absolutely brilliant in the way they dealt with all the uncertainty, all the situations they faced. We had chaplains in resort when the pandemic suddenly became the big thing. They had to sort things out at a moment's notice in the, the two Swiss resorts we were in. They served the people brilliantly, as well as ending up being able to come home. But they've got everything sorted before they left it. We've had teams of chaplains organised for every season. We have worked on the assumption that we are going to operate and people have been there ready to work, ready to serve, keen to go, organising travel plans where possible. They haven't gone. We lost the entire summer in 2020. We started the winter season <coughs> at the team. We got out there for Christmas, except that just before Christmas, the Delta variant suddenly reared its ugly head. Switzerland put retrospective quarantine on those who had just arrived in the UK, which put our Zermatt chaplain to quarantine over Christmas. And our chaplain in Wengen, who had not to go to quarantine, contracted COVID in resort just before Christmas. But they still carried on. I mean, Paul Rogers suffered uh, on his own in the apartment. Um, but at the end of that, when he got through it all, he was back running services for two or three people, serving the people in the community. We're there for the summer, finally. We got out in July. It's going well. Determination, dedication. I, our chaplain has been brilliant. Even having, in one particular case, he was here, being ready to go and having to cancel at two days notice because again, situations changed, regulations changed, wasn't able to go. So that's the dedication, the partnership. Before, because we've been there, even like for small parts, we have built the partnerships with resorts, our uh, supporters over there, the tourist offices, we've shown we care. And even if our work has been different, it's been so valuable, that sense of we're there for you and you're there for us. We've had so much help from the people in the resorts, but we've also been so valued for the fact that we're there. We're one of the first people back to help them and to encourage them. And hope. We talk about recruitment during the pandemic. I have had seven new chaplains appear for seasonal work, just making contact, not look sought out, but coming to me saying, I'd like to be a chaplain. We've got a lot of new people ready to serve. There is hope for the future. There are things to be done. There are new opportunities. There are new people wanting to get out because they're totally with the mission we're doing. So seasonal has struggled. And I've struggled, and I admit I've struggled, trying to balance being a seasonal mission manager with all the issues there, so with being a parish priest and having to deal with all the pandemic issues there. But things were in a good place, and I really appreciate the prayer and support given. Thank you. Thank you. Someone moaned about me years ago because I, they, uh, I wrote these letters to clergy and this guy wrote this letter of complaint saying Richard's always encouraged and enthusiastic. Well, <laughs> deal with it, you know. Brexit has, ma has been masked by the pandemic and as we go to the end of the pandemic, we're going to start seeing more implications of that. 
it's already happening. So there are some challenges ahead. We're forging forward. This is all about the future, by the way. We're forging forward with recruitment. At the moment, I'm in, involved in Amsterdam, Bangkok, Basel, Cairo, Hilo, Utrecht, and Veve. And th those are happening like Saturday. <coughs> I'm in Utrecht on Zoom doing some work with them. This is all happening live at the moment. So we're forging ahead. Martin Reeks Williams, who many of you know and love, will be leaving Leipzig in the next few months and moving in another chaplaincy linked with us to Addis Ababa. So we're not losing him, but he's been in Leipzig for 25 years. And that's a major change for, for the church there. So uh, we are looking forward. Martin was brought up in Uganda. So there's always been that sort of, I, I will go back one day. And um, we are still delighted to be pressurized by people outside uh, on, the, on the mission partners saying, can we do new work? What about this? What about that? So Chris and I have been having to meet together and say, we're being asked about new opportunities. I'm glad that's still happening. There will be changes internally. We will be different. We, we are going to reconfigure. Um, and we don't know what that will look like. But we will do that in such a way that is generous to our team members so that they feel comfortable as we develop out of COVID. And we do have a clear strategy, which is <laughs> useful to be able to say. I want to conclude um, with just a, I always like to finish with a bit of stories, you know. Our aim is to encourage mission focused chaplaincies. If you were here last time we did one of these, which was up in uh, Warwick, then you will have heard us talking about the idea of a lighthouse, a, a chaplaincy is a lighthouse for the gospel. Two weeks ago, one of our chaplains, no, four weeks ago, one of our chaplains was getting a coffee in Ikea in Grenoble. And he was chatting away to his wife. And this woman came up to him and said, uh, are you English? Well, the, the way that they were speaking gave it away, really, I mean, English. So they had a chat, and yes, I'm English. And she was a French English teacher. And, and they started speaking at the church. And then she said, well, could I come along? Yeah, I'm French, but can I come? She, yeah, of course, you're very, very welcome. She came to church. She was baptized last week. I mean, those are the stories I love, where the, the impact of the gospel. And the good news is she was baptized alongside 33 other people baptized in the last month there. Isn't it good when you see that light going on there? Two projects that we're doing, I want to just leave echoing in your ears. Firstly, leave it with us. Baby boomers, people of our generation, uh, haven't been good at writing wills. And we are encouraging baby boomers to consider uh, what they leave by way of a legacy. So we're doing leave it with us. This is just brilliantly produced. And I recommend it to you to um, put under the nose of anybody that was born between 46 and uh, 63, which catches me. That does catch you, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, come closer. We're just trying to encourage people to not sit on the fringes of ICS. So they may get a newsletter off a friend, but we'd rather they get it directly from us. Or if they're on the fringes getting a newsletter from us, become a member. Come closer. I mean, we're a, a cuddly, warm organisation. Come and get near to us. Richard, I'll let you introduce the break. Thank you very much, Richard.